Hi everyone, welcome back to Biological Imaging. I'm Joe DeGeorgis. Today I'd like to talk about the concept of exposure. Exposure is the amount of light that enters the camera and is detected by the sheet of film or the camera sensor. There are four variables that control exposure. The four variables of exposure include the aperture, which we've talked about before. And the aperture is the size of the pinhole, which is variable on modern cameras. The size of the hole is designated as the f-stop, and typical f-stops range from f, f32, the next size up, it's a little bit bigger, is F22. Then F16. F11. F8. F5.6. F4, F2.8, F2, and F1.4. And you can see that the smaller the number of the f-stop, the larger the aperture. And the larger the f number, f32, the smaller the aperture. These you should commit to memory. There's a relationship between these different sized apertures such that if you move from one aperture like f16 to f11, you change the camera setting from f16 to f11, you are letting in twice as much light. So twice as much light goes through the aperture of F11 as F16. And if you move from F11 to F8, you're letting in twice as much light. And if you move from F8 to 5.6, you're letting in twice as much light. So if you're moving from F16 to F11, you're letting in 2 times 2 is four times the amount of light. And if you move from F16 to F5.6, then you're letting in two times two times two, which is eight times the amount of light. So every time you move to a larger aperture, which is a smaller f-stop number, you let in twice as much light. And then, of course, it stands to reason that, so this is moving in, in this direction towards larger apertures. But if you move in the opposite direction, and you move from f5.6 f to f8, f8 is a smaller aperture, and it lets in half as much light. And if you move from f8 to f11, you're letting in half as much light. And if you move from F11 to F16, you're letting in half as much light. But if you move from 5.6 to F11, it's going to be one half times one half, which is the, a quarter of the amount of light. And if you move from F5.6 5, 5, 5 to F16, it's one half times one half times one half, which of course is one eighth the amount of light. The other variables that control exposure are the shutter speed, the ISO on a modern digital camera, it's referred to ISO. The, the film cameras used to use a term called ASA, or it still does if you have a film camera and use it. Um, 
but we're going to focus on ISO with the digital cameras that we have. And then finally, the fourth variable, which is the most important, is the light itself. Because we said when we're photographing something, we're actually photographing the light and how the light interacts with the subject. So the light is extremely important. Many times, you're, the light is from the sun. I mean, if you're outside and you're shooting in daylight, the lighting could be from the sun. But you could also use studio lighting, or you could use a flash on your camera, or other lights like street lights or signs that might be giving off some, some color of light. So the four variables are aperture, shutter speed, ISO and light itself. The shutter, as we've talked about briefly, is a door that opens and closes and so when it opens it allows light to flow through the aperture and then when it closes it blocks out the light and that is also something that's variable that you can change as the term variable suggests and a typical shutter speed is one over a hundred seconds, one one hundredth of a second. You could use one two hundredth of a second, one four hundredth of a second, one eight hundredth of a second, and so on, or a time in between these, but these are typical shutter speeds. Also one over fifty, one over twenty-five, and so on. And, of course, the mathematical relationship between these is if you go from a shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second to a shutter speed of one two hundredth of a second, one two hundredth is half the amount of time as one over a hundred. So if you move from one over a hundred to one over two hundred, you're letting in half as much light. And if you go from one over two hundred to one over four hundred, you're letting in half as much light. And if you go from 1 over 400 to 1 over 800, you're letting in half as much light. But if you go from 1 over 100 to 1 over 400, it's 1 half times 1 half, so it's a quarter of the amount of light. And if you go from 1 over 100 to 1 over 800, then it's 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 eighth the amount of light. ISO also has this relationship of doubling or going in half increments. So the very uh, best ISO to use is ISO 100, which is the least sensitive sensor setting. There are a few cameras that have an ISO of 50 but the majority of modern cameras have the lowest ISO setting of 100. If you set the ISO to 200, then the sensor is set at a setting that's twice as sensitive as ISO 100. So if the sensor is twice as sensitive, it needs half the amount of light as, as ISO 100. And if you use an ISO 400, you need one quarter the amount of light as ISO 100 or half the amount of light of ISO 200. And the ISO could be 800 or 1600, 3200 and so on. The aperture along with being one of the variables that controls exposure also controls depth of field and depth of field is the distance of the nearest and farthest element in a scene, in an image, that appear to be sharp within the image. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But I do want to mention that the smaller the aperture, the greater the depth of field, and the larger the aperture, the shallower the depth of field. And we'll review this in more detail. The shutter speed also is a variable of exposure, but also controls motion blur. So if you leave the shutter open for a very long period of time and people are running around, 
in the scene that you're photographing, the people may appear blurry because they're moving while you're trying to take the exposure. If you use a very fast shutter speed, then you can stop action and capture a sharp image of the people running around. So aperture also controls depth of field and shutter speed controls motion blur. So when taking a photograph, it turns out that there is only one correct exposure for the subject. And oftentimes people will argue against this concept because they say that it's art, photography is art, and so whatever exposure you want it to be is correct because it was the exposure used to take the photograph and that's the effect that you wanted. But that argument falls apart, at least in terms of how cameras work. Let me put it this way. In photography, there's something known as a photographic gray card, which is 18% gray. And that's the midpoint in between something that's completely white and completely black. And it's used to calibrate both color in photography as well as exposure. And if you take a photograph of the gray card and then you print the photograph, the gray card should be 18% gray. That's the proper exposure. If the card is darker than 18% gray, then the image is underexposed. And if it's lighter than 18% gray, then the card is overexposed. Now you can overexpose and underexpose because of art, because of the effect that you're trying to achieve, but you should realize that your photograph is overexposed or underexposed. There's a clever rule in photography known as Sunny 16. The Sunny 16 rule states that if it's a clear day with not a cloud in the sky, bright sunlight, and it's between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., no clouds, bright and sunny, that if you set your f-stop at f-16, I mean, that's the sunny 16, the f-stop at 16, and you set your ISO at 100, and you set your shutter speed at the reciprocal of the ISO, the reciprocal is of 100 is 1 over 100. And this is your light. So we have light, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. If you set your camera like this and you put someone in a bright sunny field and you take the photograph, they will be properly exposed. The person will be properly exposed. You don't need a light meter. This is true whether it's winter time or summer time, spring or fall. If you are in this lighting condition and you set your camera to these settings and take the photograph, that, that person will be properly exposed. And if they are holding a gray card in front of them, the gray card will be properly exposed. It will indeed be 18% gray. So we mentioned that the shutter speed controls motion blur. And if you're photographing a racehorse on a sunny day between 10 a.m. and 2, no clouds in the sky, the horse might be so fast that taking a photograph at 1 over 100, it might be hard to capture the horse without motion blur. So you may want to increase the shutter speed 
to 1 over 400, a faster shutter speed to try to stop the action of the horse to make it perfectly sharp in the image. But now this is letting in one quarter the amount of light. I mean, 1 over 200 would be half as much light and 1 over 400 is one fourth the amount of light. So if you're letting in one fourth the amount of light, it's going to be underexposed. The image is going to be underexposed if you shot it at 1 over 400. But you can compensate for this by increasing the sensitivity of the sensor. So we said that if you used an ISO of 200, it would be twice as sensitive, but we need four times the sensitivity, not two times the sensitivity. So we need to raise the ISO to 400. And now, if you shoot this scene, it will be properly exposed. So any time that you change the shutter speed in this case, you need to change the ISO so that they are the reciprocal of one another. So if, if we change the shutter speed to 1 over 800, you would set your ISO to 800. If you set your shutter speed to 1 over 1600, you would need an ISO of 1600. And if you follow this rule and you shoot during this daylight scenario, the image will always be properly exposed. So, depth of field is the distance between the nearest and farthest subject in the scene that appears sharp to your eye in the image. So a shallow depth of field would be a very narrow region that's in focus. For instance, in portraiture, if you use a very shallow depth of field on, on a person, you may have the person perfectly in focus but the background completely blurred out. In other images, like landscapes, you might want the entire scene to be in focus. So let's say we want to move towards a shallower depth of field to do portraiture. So instead of using F16, we're going to make the hole bigger. So F16 to F11, and then F11 to F8 let's say. So we want to use F8. But F8 is four times as much light coming in as F16 because moving from F16 to F11 lets in twice as much light and F11 to F8 lets in twice as much light. So if you move from 16 to 8, it's 2 times 2, or 4 times the amount of light. Now, if our ISO was at 100, because it's the reciprocal of our shutter speed in the Sunny 16 rule when shooting at F16, you can't make the camera less sensitive because 100 is the least sensitive ISO on our camera, on the cameras that we're using in class. So you can't decrease the exposure by using a lower ISO because there is no lower ISO. So you would have to then um, have a less exposed image by changing shutter speed. So if you went to 1 over 200, that would be letting in half as much light. And then if you went to 1 over 400, you'd be, this would be half here and half from 1 over 200 to 1 over 400. But if you move from 1 over 100 to 1 over 400, that's 1 quarter the amount of light. So we're increasing the exposure four times by increasing the size of the aperture, but we're decreasing exposure to one quarter the amount of exposure by 
having a faster shutter speed. So now if you shoot this image at f8 with ISO at 100 and shutter speed at 1 over 400, again, the image will be properly exposed. Okay, let's go back to the Sunny 16 rule one more time. So we said that there's only one correct exposure, and that exposure would allow a gray card being photographed to be 18% gray when the photograph is taken. So the gray card is correctly exposed. Now, that doesn't mean that changing the exposure to have someone overexposed or underexposed isn't a legitimate photograph. For instance, if you wanted to create a silhouette of a person at the beach, then as the sun setting over the horizon, you would put the person's back towards the sun and photograph that person and correctly expose for the sun. When you took the photograph, the person would be under underexposed and you'd see that person as a silhouette against the sunset. So that's fine. All I'm trying to say is that you have to recognize that the person is underexposed. And if the person were holding a gray card up against their chest, the gray card would be black. It would be silhouetted also. And so the gray card is underexposed and the person in the scene is underexposed. But if that's the effect that you're looking for to create the silhouette, then that's perfectly legitimate. It's just that you have to recognize that indeed the person is underexposed. So, if we set up the Sunny 16 rule and there's a person in the field, I'm in the field and you're taking a photograph of me and it's between the times of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and you set the camera up at a shutter speed of 1 over 100 with an f-stop of f16 and an ISO of 100, you take a photograph of me holding a gray card, the gray card will be properly exposed and I will be properly exposed. All right, let's say that you're a wedding photographer and you're taking a picture of the bride and she has her white dress on in her veil and she is going to be the subject of the scene. The question is, how do you have to change the exposure given the fact that the bride has a white dress on? Sometimes people think that you have to change the exposure because she has a bright white dress on. But the Sunny 16 rule doesn't say anything at all about the subject matter. It says any subject that's in a field on a bright sunny day between 10 and 2, not a cloud in the sky. If you set the shutter speed at 1 over 100, the f-stop at f16 and the ISO at 100, the subject will be properly exposed. And if she, the bride, were holding a gray card in her hand, the gray card would be properly exposed. It would be 18% gray, and she indeed would be properly exposed. If you had to change the exposure because she had a white dress on, and then you had to change the exposure to something else to photograph the groom in his dark tuxedo, then you could never take a photograph of the bride and the groom together and get a proper exposure, right? But the Sunny 16 rule is without regard to what the subject is. The rule holds true all of the time. So if you have the bride in her white dress and the groom in his dark tuxedo, the bride's dress, the bride herself, the black tuxedo, and the groom are all properly exposed. And if they're holding a gray card, the gray card is properly exposed. And if you brought a black and white cow into the scene, the black and white cow, the bride and the groom would all be properly exposed. Now, just to add one wrinkle to this, if you had the bride and the groom and they were in the beautiful sunlight and the cow black and white cow went under a tree 
Now you have to choose whether you want the bride and groom to be properly exposed, which would mean stay at sunny 16. If you take a photograph of this scene at sunny 16, that is under the rule, the bride and groom are still in the sunlight and they would be properly exposed. And the cow, of course, would be underexposed because he's underneath the shade tree. If you change the exposure by either making the f-stop bigger, like f-16 to f-11 to f-8, which would be four times the amount of light, which would get the cow closer to be being properly exposed, then now the cow is properly exposed, but the bride and groom are overexposed. So it's a complex lighting scene and decisions have to be made as to how you want that scene to turn out, how you'd like the image to turn out of that particular subject matter.